one, go. You know, I got to bark, 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 woof, 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 bark, 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 woof, woof, bark, bark, bark. Ruining the song is what I do. That's how we start the show. It's legally distinct music because I talk all over it. Hey, I'm Grant, one of your hosts of Sonic Weekly, the podcast where we talk about Sonic the Hedgehog every seven days or so. Had a lot of guests the past number of episodes. Here we are in the second episode of season three. Season three, why are we in season three? Because we took a month break. So now we're back. So it's season three. That's how that works. And then, oh boy, oh boy, what an episode. But uh, first, he's the ringmaster of Saturn. It's Bo. Hi, Bo. Here we go, buddy. Hey, I am coming into this not at all knowing where I am in the recording process, but uh, we're going to get it sorted out. It's all good. And here he is out of the shadows, into the spotlight, the star of the show. From Sonic Retro, it's David the Lurker. Whoa, hi Grant, hi Bo. Yeah, it's it's nice to be back, and and you know after after excitement and intrigue, it's it's just the three of us back to basics. It's always it's always nice to be back to basics, where we just look at each other and try to force. I mean, naturally have Sonic the Hedgehog conversation. It's <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do it with the magic of technology, where we all look very pixelated yes. in our cameras to each other. With the magic of ZenCaster, shout out to ZenCaster, and uh, yeah, shout out to uh, thank you to the listeners who have contributed to our Ko-Fi. That's been awesome. People have even signed up to be members, which means donating five dollars a month. And everybody who donates does receive a special custom prize. No big deal ashland stickers david songs <laughs> Bo sonnets i you know we don't know exactly but it's like a prize pack so that's pretty fun uh, i can come up with a song yeah hey sonic there i actually i probably shouldn't have done that that's that's the theme to the sonic 3 the film you know yeah you have speed me up and the other one can't think of the name stars in the sky I yeah. like Stars in the Sky. I think Stars in the Sky is a good song. It is. It is. A I good also song. like Stars in the Sky. And I like Speed Me Up. And I think Speed Me Up is a good song. And if you want to argue with me about either of those points, I'm going to give you an address for you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, oh. yeah, come to the, the Sonic Weekly meetup and we'll try to do the verses of Speed Me Up at karaoke. All right. Yeah. I, I claim the uh, Ty Dolla Sign one. But, you know, speaking of Sonic music, there I guess there is a news story that kind of connects to that. Whoa. Yeah. Check in, check in the news over at SonicStadium.org, who is not affiliated with this podcast, but... Um, they don't know we do this. <laughs> they probably have no idea. Yeah. Um, we like them anyway. We yeah. do. We do like them. They, they do have yeah. their own Sonic podcast going around. Uh, I, Sonic Talk, I think, is... So we should we should have them on the show and do another crossover unless that unless you don't want that. If the listeners were like, actually, we're done with no, the crossover, no, 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 would no. Be, that would be strange. Anyway, yes, busted frontman, but no, the busted is in quotes. The, the James Bourne <laughs> shares teaser of Sonic the Hedgehog Power Ballad. So I guess there was a group called Busted, which I may have been more popular in the UK than they were here because I. I don't, I didn't know who they were. It, it means something else over there. It, it could, <laughs> well, I yes. thought you, when, I, when you said that there was news about Sonic music, I, I was excited. And I thought I knew where you were going. Oh. Because the Sonic YouTube uh, and social accounts have posted new remixes. That's true. For the upcoming Sonic X Shadow Generations. Uh, one for Kingdom Valley. One for, what was the one today? Uh, Ark? Space Comedy Arc? It was, I don't know, I'll tell you. That was the headlining song, but because I had mentioned, oh, that's the Sonic 3, I was like, let me do that one first. Because it's funny to me. Mm. Yeah, what is it called? Uh, yeah, Space Colony Arc Music, whatever it is, whatever it's actually called. They're, they're remixes. They're both remixes. I liked the Kingdom Valley one, and it makes me want a remix yeah. of Radical Train, because Radical Train yeah. is a great, yeah. great song. Radical Train <laughs> rules. The 06 yeah. soundtrack in general has just amazing music for every yeah, stage. Radical Train, good because it calls to mind a train without literally being a train whistle. It's like yeah. close to a train whistle, but it's not actually a train whistle. It is a song that 
feels that that somehow effectively sonically communicates to your ears that you are chasing a train. That's true. Have you ever chased a train in real life? No, but I have had to sit and wait for a train to cross for like hours of my life because I used to live in a town that was bisected by train tracks. And sometimes you would just get very unlucky and there's like this two mile long train and you're waiting at the stop sign and there's nowhere to go. Oh, and that happened to me once when I was, I think, in the middle of nowhere trying to drive home. Uh, and by that, I think it was Ohio. Well, I lived in the, I lived in the middle of nowhere. That yeah. was but... yes. The song it is Space Colony. Space Colony Arc Act One. Teddy Lloyd and Jun Sonoe remix trailer version. The I don't know what Teddy Lloyd is. Uh, it, it says here on the Sonic Stadium article, we imagine the Teddy Lloyd mentioned is the popular Japanese musician responsible for the soundtrack to anime Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt. Yeah, I mean, because they're like, oh, we'll have to wait and see if that's true. And I'm like, uh, well, if, if they're called Teddy Lloyd, who else is using that name? I don't. <laughs> what? <laughs> they're, 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 like, maybe Teddy Lloyd is very common. I, well, the Teddy fits with the theme if you get the rest of it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yes but yeah it's a cool it's a cool song it's also got that neat little like it's got some neat visuals so did the other remix yeah neat visuals neat song neat shadow yeah this is the year of shadow so they're not fearless yeah so they're not letting shadow down there's a lot to uh shadow look forward to theoretically there's a movie coming out Right. Theoretically, there's a trailer that will preview that movie and that will theoretically be happening at some point, but it hasn't happened yet. No, no, it hasn't. And also what hasn't happened yet is that the new game hasn't come out. No, this is part of the deal of a weekly podcast. The things come out (laughs) once a year. We make many more episodes than there are things. So a lot of it is just anticipating it. And then sometimes it's about reviewing it. Or today, this week, what we're going to do is look back and see how we uh, are feeling about some things that we did talk about that we were hyping up before they came out, reviewed after they came out, and then promptly moved on. But now it's time to circle back to last year and the year before that and talk about the complete packages of Sonic Frontiers and Sonic Superstars, given that now both have received, I think, the full extent of the DLC that they are going to receive, which for Sonic Superstars was primarily costumes. And for Sonic Frontiers was a a, a complete, you know, fourth act to the the game. A plethora of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. An an extra soundtrack. uh, Yeah, fourth act. Really, really weird extra stuff. Right. The the birthday mode making everything just clash visually. You you turn that off immediately. You don't need that. Also, because it is what a... Uh, a medley that I think is about 34 hours long with the worst beginning of any Sonic song, even though it is just the... <laughs> not, not to be rude, about but the beginning. Yeah, yeah that happy birthday right. rendition is maybe one of the roughest <laughs> happy birthdays I've ever heard. It's pretty bad. And it is a good mix, though. Otherwise, like, a, if you're able to get right. past that, it's like it. it's the it's a nice mix of jaunty tunes. You got Palm Tree Panic early on. I forget what else. I remember thinking, oh, this is this is good. I would listen to this playlist on Spotify, but I would not. I would start at track two. I would skip that weird right. auto-tuned happy birthday. <laughs> it's sort of like when greeting cards at uh, Walmart or Target, they sing, but they are like the little speaker, so it sounds really bad. And the battery's down. and The battery's yeah, but, dead. That's what uh, it sounds like, yeah. It's always a good time. Yeah, but... If if that's like the worst thing out of all the updates, I think Sonic Frontiers, with everything out, looking back on it, I still look at it very fondly. I still like when I think about the time I spent with Frontiers and it was a lot. It was 90, 100 hours or whatever. Like I had a lot of fun and I had a lot of fun with it in a way that I hadn't with a 3D Sonic game in in years and years. And it does feel like a very promising start of a new era. I agree with all of this so far. Yeah. And then when I when I think about it, I guess in relation like, oh, yeah, there was Frontiers and then we got Superstars. You know, I think that whatever shine I had on Superstars has been dulled. And wow. if I were to compare the two, I'd be like, I think I like Frontiers a lot more than I do superstars if we're comparing the two, 
I think we are comparing the two, but let me let me uh, yeah. pause you there mm-hmm. and wheel around to the other side of the desk and say hello, Bo. Yes. What what is what are your feelings on on superstars and frontiers looking back at the the whole mess of it? Yeah, I think with some distance from the final battle with Fang, that superstars is great. It is it was just edged out of the Mount Rushmore of Sonic games by the original four already taking up all the slots. But (laughs) if there were another space on that mountain, they would be carving superstars in there right now. It's it's got it all. It's got the right physics. It's got the right characters. It's got great level gimmicks in time attack mode. If you yeah. don't play the bosses and you don't you... play the multiplayer, this is one of the great Sonic games. And uh, history will will vindicate me on this, um, but not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we got to forget uh... a few more things. Oh, OK, well. Grant, you you put yourself in a mediator position, but clearly you also have to answer the the question how you feel about frontiers, how you feel about superstars, and how you feel about comparing them. They're they're both lovely new entries in the classic and the modern series. I think for sure I lean more towards what you were saying, David, that I that superstars, as I have revisited it, it is now becoming like a curiosity rather than something that I'm really enjoying playing and i think the main problem with it is is that i don't really have a reliable second player i can badger ashlyn into sometimes pity playing with me and she will (laughs) reluctantly do so for a little while but the game is very intended to be played and the bosses are much better when you're playing with a friend what kills me too is how poorly optimized it is on switch Mm. the load times kind are the load times on the Sonic on Switch is actually a, a really kind of weird thing because Sonic Forces is great. It it holds up as well as the PlayStation 4 version does. It it's they're equal. They're the same product. But then and Sonic Mania as well. Uh but then with Sonic Origins you get like the island camera is not quite as good. Sonic Colors Ultimate, the load times are worse. Sonic Frontiers obviously there's like a bit of a downgrade visually in the textures and stuff, but that that's actually kind of more I think acceptable because it feels such like a a nice handheld game. Sonic Frontiers does. I, I'm going to disagree slightly and say I'm, I'm talking my book here. I'm talking up superstars and talking down frontiers, but I'll I'll come back and praise frontiers in a minute. But Sonic Frontiers <laughs> looks worse than the games that came out over ten years prior. Yes, that is true. I can't argue that. That is that it's th- visual direction and like quality of graphics like okay popping of that level unforgivable in this time and just the way the the visuals look go back to generations on original hardware for that looks fantastic and just frontiers doesn't yeah you're totally right uh i i remember playing 06 for the first time shortly after playing frontiers and being like oh six looks better like, but like <laughs> it, it just does it has a better it's using its own hardware better and i'm hopeful optimistic that sonic x shadow generations will be a good high note for sonic on the switch because it is a ps3 game there's no reason for it to have like crazy new additional but who knows right it, it's hard to say but i mean yeah i i do have to agree like i think about unleash and unleash i think still looks amazing and yeah, it, even though Frontiers is how many, like 5, 10, 15, whatever number is in between those two it's years later. 15 years newer than Unleashed. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, um, yeah, it still doesn't, visually, I, I do wish there were, it was, a, it was a bit more varied, maybe a bit more Sonic, a bit less. There's a reason people compared it to like PSO2 New Genesis, because it, it just <laughs> kind of looks like yes. that, but... <laughs> I guess when I when I, when I when I think about Frontiers versus Superstars, just those two in a bubble, I spent a lot more time with Frontiers. I felt like I had more fun gameplay wise, the the gameplay loop for whatever reason. Even though Superstars should be the one that I'm attracted to more because it is just cl- like the physics are there. Some of the levels I I think are are great and rank up there with with any of of you know the other classic ones but then there are other levels that i think are just a little uh, a a little bit looser like they kind of have sort of lost their way like it doesn't feel as sonical 
as it should gameplay wise <laughs> sonic which is yeah, of course like in that. webster's uh, dictionary <laughs> i like that new entry yes it, it can be marked back to this occasion right that in the archives i definitely didn't steal it from a sonic advanced japanese commercial <laughs> <laughs> nah. you, can, you can cut that part we're gonna claim it that's the earliest attestation that's right for the oxford english dictionary yeah <laughs> here's here's the amazing thing about sonic frontiers though because mm-hmm. everything you're saying is true it looks bad it looks like it just doesn't look good. I was going to make a comparison, but I think anything I compare it to is kind of insulting to what I compare it to. It looks uniquely ugly, but it's so fun, particularly with the spin dash. And it really shouldn't work because it's very annoying how undiegetic the jungle gym parts are. And sometimes I wonder how necessary they really are if you had the spin dash from the beginning and maybe just more rocks and slopes and more things. I think everybody would have liked to have seen just at least like the textures not be these alien purple and green things but instead be part of the ruins that you are interacting with so hopefully like the frontiers 2 i would love it to see it be in a city and you're jumping across different platforms and rails and so forth in that way it's the it's kind of the the miracle of like these disparate things coming together that you've talked about before Bo. of like it is more than some of its parts but it's just it's just more fun even though sonic superstars looks like looks like it should be more fun because it's yeah it's got all the it checks all the boxes stick with the visuals for a a moment though but like superstars looks good now i personally would prefer pixel art because i never left the 1990s but (laughs) that's where you're recording from given that it's it's not pixel art like i think it it is very visually appealing the stages have nice direction does it look better than mania (sighs) I, I think it's hard to compare pixel art to non-pixel art, but I think it improves on, let's say, how Generations Classic levels look. And I thought those look very nice. And it improves on Sonic 4 Episode 1 and Episode 2, their attempt at, oh, let's do a 2D game with non-pixel graphics. And, you know, as bad as those two games are, they don't look bad, especially Episode right. 2. Right. Episode... Maybe, I don't know, Episode 1 is kind of bland, but episode two looks good. yeah ep- episode one is it's like it's it's gloss it's glossy rubbery yeah. it's it, there's something about it. it it's been dipped in something and and in episode two they scraped off <laughs> <laughs> well the, the thing about the superstars visuals again though is it does make a difference of what platform you're playing it on because on switch the lower resolution of it makes them have jaggier Mm, yeah. edges than they do when you're playing it on playstation or pc and you don't have that difference when you're playing mania because they're it's going to look the same on each platform and i also agree that not, I, part of it's nostalgia but i also just think it like the characters look a certain way like i've enjoyed going back to origins and found you know just as much fun replaying the classics but with amy and knuckles in sonic one and sonic cd the other thing about the superstars thing that's frustrating frontier says this problem a little bit Superstars has it more where you kind of miss the red ring hunt or an equivalent. There is the big gold coins Mm -hmm. and things, but I feel like maybe if there was more Mm -hmm. incentive to explore, that could have been a fun thing to keep the replayability up for superstars. Yeah, I mean, I'm playing the part of defending superstars here, but to me, it is good when you consider the core time attack gameplay the same way you would replay Sonic CD. And I don't think it's an accident that this is a Neoto Oshima directed thing and they both have that in common. You load up your Sonic CD save and you've gotten to the end. Where where do you start? You start at the, the end of it. The only way to replay the old levels is through time attack. And it's the same. Mm-hmm. I guess in Superstars you can replay, but the proper way to replay is yeah. through time attack in Superstars because then you don't have the bosses. Yeah, <laughs> right. But you also miss like a boss mode because the bosses are, are annoying, but they're also fun in their own way. Some of them. <laughs> like the knock on Sonic CD's bosses is that they're all too easy and three hits is like like six hit, six, eight, six to eight hits is the correct number of hits. And in CD, it's three. And in Superstars, it's yeah. fucking... It's 27 or whatever <laughs> 20, yeah it is it's too much like if 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 the if the superstars bosses were three to four hits i think they'd have a lot less complaints because it just takes so long in between the moments you can yeah. hit them and that and that i think is like that 
that's the biggest issue because there's also times where you feel like you should be able to hit it or hit, get in a second hit and you're not allowed to well again that's going back to the multiplayer thing this is intended the reason it has that delay is so that it's not over in two seconds when all four players hit at the same time right but you know at, at the same time why not who cares like if you have four people if you're sitting on a couch with four people and you get to the boss and the boss takes 10 seconds to defeat you're gonna move on you're like oh, okay we're going to the next level and we're doing more chaos instead what happens is you can only hit it once and then three of you die yeah and then it is just the fourth person i mean i haven't properly played it with four people but that's how i've seen it i feel like it's a it's written into the sonic constitution that you should be able to risk your rings yeah. for more it hits. It should be that sort of that trade-off. Like, yeah, there's one good safe hit, but if you want to be dangerous, you can get in a second or a third. Because even then, if it flies away and it's like, oh, you can't hit it yet, at least you, you bopped it like three times. You know, it, it's sort of... Yeah. Um, the risk-reward is not yeah. Yeah. correct. And the other thing yeah. I think violates the constitution of Sonic is... <laughs> uh insta kills from a boss which mm, no yeah my third amendment sonic right is that <laughs> if i have one ring mm-hmm. i'm still alive yes yeah the it's, only time you know, the rings don't help is if you get crushed or you drown because right, it doesn't matter how many one. rings are in your lungs the water's gonna fill them up <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you yeah thank you for that yeah that's and same with a crushing death even though Sonic having occasional guts. rubber hose physics. Yeah. yeah, I think that's one of those I, robotics traps that maybe. I, I think that needs to be amended. Oh, in the really? Sonic Constitution to to overrule yeah. well, crushing I mean, if, death. If Sonic's here, and here's the thing, and you get crushed. Where does Sonic go? Why doesn't he? No, he gets. He's too fast. He's too. F- <laughs> no, he gets squashed, and his ring rings get scattered. Should be like any other. Yeah. Game. Oh, yeah. But then if he's like flat, and then inflates that's it's looney tunes physics looney tunes logic which isn't exactly yeah, that's fine well if it's aosth yeah like oh if there was an <laughs> aosth game i'd say let sonic get crushed a hundred times and you never die but the ninja turtles get flattened in their video games um <laughs> yeah, you know i think do. sonic sonic is... falls from a, a flying battery into some sand and just hops out like, he's fine yeah. he's fine multiple times like yeah. he does that a lot right. and it, it's kind of a, a thing that he does eventually does it twice <laughs> yeah <laughs> in sonic 3 and knuckles he does it once in sonic adventure 2 he does it right he he loves to fall but i guess if any yeah he doesn't it's a one of the one the first the first uh constitutional rule law of sonic is that he doesn't take fall damage yeah, just, you can drop yeah. him from outer space, which is very strange because it felt so poignant when Tails caught him at the end of Sonic Two with the tornado. Right, but it, in retrospect, <laughs> it's completely unnecessary. Right. Especially yeah, Sonic finds fine. later, like, what was that about? I was just, I was just, <laughs> I was like, oh, I thought you needed <laughs> my help. He's like, no, I would have been fine. You wasted your time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and especially if you get all the chaos emeralds, it doubly doesn't matter. Yeah. Tails is just there to pose. Yeah. All right. Well, when when it comes to frontiers and superstars, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a story. This is going to be a shocking story. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh gee. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So during the break, I did something extremely dangerous. Oh my god, David, what did you do? David? I played Balan Wonderworld. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did see that. Yes. I meant to watch that FTCR episode. I did not. Yes. What I, happened? I played through the, I guess, the main body of Wonder World all the way to that, to the final boss. Um, it was fine. And then it was not fine um, and confusing. You know, if you've, if anyone has looked up any review on, on Wonder World, I don't think I can add much to it. Like it's clearly, it has some issues. <laughs> What what after I played some Balan, I was like, I'm going to do a palette cleanser, and I loaded up superstars, and I played through the first level in time attack, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is fun, and I played through a couple levels, but then I went to I don't know what what's it called? It's it's the one with the boss that's like a piggy bank, it's like Golden Capital or something. Golden Capital, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I went to Golden Capital, and I started getting like very annoyed with the game. Golden Capital might be sort of like 
it, 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 it's symbolic of everything because, oh, it's using Sonic 1 concept art and like, oh, you recognize the, the sun graphic, you recognize these loops like, oh, that's cool. But hey, those loops, there's two of them in a room that don't need loops and you they don't need to be there. It's not part of the topography. It's just thrown in there because they went, oh, we're supposed to put a loop in here. Like it feels very weird and disconnected. And, and the level itself, I wasn't having as much fun with it as the first one. Like I, I feel like the first level in Superstars might be the strongest one. So then I was like, let me do something that maybe I'll regret. And I loaded up Sonic 4 Episode 1 and started playing mm-hmm. through Splash Hill Zone Act 1 to get an achievement on Steam where you get through it in like 30 seconds or whatever it is. And I was in a call with someone while I was doing all of these things. And they went, and it, it was it was Chris, it was Mykonos fan. And he went, when I was playing Sonic 4, David, you sound way more excited playing Sonic 4 than you did the entirety that you were playing through Superstars. And I'm like oh no, you might be right. And that's not to say that Sonic 4 is a good game. I've had many issues with it over the years, but in that moment where I was like, oh, let me just play through a couple Superstars levels. Oh, let me just try to play through the first level of Episode 4. I guess I was more invested in 4 in that moment in time. I can't say that Sonic 4 is better than superstars but the fact that sonic 4 was holding my attention more than superstars might speak more to how i actually feel about superstars as a whole i you've lost me here so i have also lost wait can david can you do a tldr of what you just said because i i i'm struggling you started with balan huh I was. You took a loop through Superstars. Yes. Two loops, I think, yes. that weren't supposed to be there, <laughs> and then. And then I went to Sonic Four. Landed in, and then landed in Sonic Four. So how did you do that? That was some gymnastics. That was that Olymp- Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. Well, were the those gymnastics. were the three games that I played in a row. Right. I was playing a bit of ba- oh, Balan, okay. and then I went to Superstars, and oh, then I, I went to Episode Four or Sonic Four Episode One. And I see. Yes. Because also, like, when you play Balan and then you play Superstars, there, I think there is some DNA there, especially when it comes to the way the games want to tell a story, which is poorly. They're, they're, <laughs> <laughs> they both expect you to read or, or to engage with ancillary, ancillary material. Ancillary? It doesn't matter. And But when you do, they don't answer any of the questions that you have about the game it just makes things more confusing <laughs> while at least frontiers there there it's it's not perfect in his storytelling but especially with the dlc it feels more explained and full and it's not like you need to go outside the game to understand basics while superstars the whole like the whole final boss dragon thing is if and, unless you watch the the trio of trouble cartoon you're you're not like and even then you're not really getting a sense of what it where where are we going with this and they just throw a dragon at you and it's sort of like balan where you're going through and you're like i don't know what i'm doing and i don't know who i'm engaging with and i don't know what my goal is but i guess i got to the end of the game and it's over <laughs> and yet for some reason yes and and the reason i brought up sonic 4 is just because in that moment after going from Balan to Superstars to Sonic 4, Sonic 4 was, for whatever reason, the most excited I was about playing a game in those three in succession, okay, which also yeah. doesn't make sense to me. Yes. And uh, all right. Number one, I'm going to defend Golden mm-hmm. Capital. Golden Capital is good because <laughs> you can get lots and lots of rings. And yeah. everyone knows that lots and lots of rings is good in a Sonic Zone. And that Piggy Bank boss is very clever and probably the best boss in superstar the other good thing about golden capital 1.5 is that it has the fun cutscenes with the lore with the emeralds and fang and knuckles and that's pretty cool yes and so number two is uh sonic 4 episode one splash hill is not a bad opening act but splash hill uh act two is quite bad so <laughs> yeah i'm i'm not sitting here defending sonic 4 because if i had continued i feel like i would have been like oh i'm I'm done because i've played sonic 4 recently just trying to do things with it 
and I'm like, I don't like this game. But in the in that moment of like, I'm just focusing on on Act One. Why do I sound more excited and more engaged than I did playing Superstars previous? And that's the confusing. And I, and I think it's if Superstars was on the same level as the classics and his mania, I definitely would not have reacted that way. I wouldn't have wanted to leave Superstars. But I think it's just there's some good things to it, but it's also messy and it has the RZS DNA where it's like, oh, this is good enough. And and you definitely get that with, say, Balin, where they went, oh, this is good enough. And they didn't stop to think, maybe we should redesign this from the ground up. <laughs> yeah, where I guess where I get with Superstars is mm-hmm. it's good because you can leave out most of the bad parts which the bad parts are the bosses and the multiplayer and you don't have to experience those things it's like we served you this wonderful (laughs) meal and then on a different plate we served you this like terrible side dish and you're like you know what i'm just gonna stick with the main meal oh like when i would get the coleslaw and i just for when i was younger i didn't want to engage with that coleslaw although now (laughs) I do enjoy coleslaw, but back then it would rot. It would rot on that plate. And I find it funny, though, Bo, because you're like, you can ignore the multiplayer. And Grant, you're like, oh, this would be better if I could have somebody else playing <laughs> with me. <laughs> but I think that's the fallacy. It's like the bosses aren't any better in multiplayer. Oh, really? Yeah. I think, uh, you know, circling back to something <laughs> I said earlier, <laughs> uh, I do think there should be a boss rush mode like there is in Origins. And I think there should be that uh, as well for uh, freaking Frontiers. There isn't. There's like the enemy rush oh, but, mode. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. But, that, but like not not just. Not just the, the Titan. I think at the end of the yeah. DLC 3, you can do a boss rush with the Master Coco challenge. but. Yeah, it should be in the menu. Uh, I guess, yeah. yeah. But at that point, you're kind of... You want to be done with it. And then you the other thing <laughs> that both of these games need is yeah. uh, playlists. You should be able to, especially with cyberspace, mm-hmm. you should be able to say, I'm going to take these seven and play them in a row, and that will be this thing. And you could share your playlists with like Mario Maker style, import your friends' playlists. The Dreamcast VMUs and the Sega Net internet would have had this capability so i think it is possible to accomplish bring back the vmu just in general i want to plug that into everything you know what the uh, cpu for the vmu is called what's that the potato (laughs) (laughs) it is wow yeah can you fry it boil it (laughs) mash it oh so I, I've been negative on Frontiers and positive on Superstars here. I'm playing a bit, a little bit, because I do love Frontiers. Frontiers is unexpectedly great. And I think it's because it is taking a risk in every moment. And I appreciate that. It is on paper like it shouldn't work, and it does work. And it's because they're always right on the edge of, we've gone too far with this. Mm-hmm. and some parts of it are, are actually crazy like the especially in DLC 3 <laughs> like the the cyberspace stages where you have to use the spin dash those are actively crazy and yeah. some of the the lost coco challenges how the, you can't do those without like gl- glitching through stuff and uh you they know wanted to amp it up. somehow it's fun yeah drive you crazy but in a in a good way yeah i mean i gotta i gotta agree with that sonic is about taking chances the first sonic game is sega taking a chance and so it makes sense that frontiers would like any sonic game should kind of embody that and continue it not play it safe and frontiers wasn't playing it safe even if on paper it looks like it's safe oh open world sonic yeah everyone said that but you're right it is more it takes chance it takes chances it takes chances. Superstars is playing it safe. It's the you know formula tried and true, and mm-hmm. you know where they deviate from that is where it falls off. But I I think I like that in the odd year I get the risk taking new 3D thing, and in the even year, or actually switch these whatever it was, <laughs> I get the. <laughs> 
Frontiers came out in 22 and Superstars came out in 23. I get the the classic thing that we know works and we could just keep doing classic levels forever. So, you know, give me more of both, please. Mm. Yeah. Well, Sonic X Shadow Generations. That's the game for you. All right. It is a little both. I, I got to say to you also that playing through the Frontiers DLC when you came to visit Bo and Sam as well for the Symphony, trying to get through the those very, very difficult Master Coco challenges by just passing the controller around. Super fun. That yeah. felt like being a kid and trying to like get past the Casino Night Zone boss. Where like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. Got to wait till the older brother gets home. To, maybe he can beat this maybe. part. <laughs> <laughs> he's too busy being on a date with a girl but he still has to be home by nine or mom will <laughs> ground him <laughs> we'll come back to we'll circle back to this uh-huh. for final thoughts but first we have mailbag and Ooh. rings of saturn so let's start with rings of saturn and then go to the mailbag Rings of Saturn. Uh, I'm continuing my affair with Sega Saturn Shiro community. Don't be mad. You know, we, we, we discussed this. Right. So today they're running my article about uh, Dungeon Master Nexus. So the Dungeon Master series goes back to the Atari ST, one of the best selling games on that platform. And they did several more games after that. The very last one of which, 1998, came out on the Saturn. And uh, I cannot figure out how to play it there is an english <laughs> translation patch that you know makes it very clear what you're supposed to do and i cannot do any of it i cannot advance at all in the game but what i did do and can do is i found that there's a, a hidden cheat code in there that nobody's found in the last 26 years and uh it lets you clip through the walls and skip levels and is the only way for me to make any progress in this game and so I found the cheat code and I wrote it down and I took a video of the process of it. You can also get some developer debug information if you like that sort of stuff, which I really do. And, uh, you know, for that very small Dungeon Master uh, fandom, we're hearing very good things. And what I love about the Dungeon Master <laughs> fandom is their wiki goes back to 2005 and there's pages on there that say created 2005, last updated 2005 because they got it right back then. And there's you know, been no <laughs> d- new developments, but they also have, you know, <laughs> created this year and updated this year because wow. people are still making fan games. People are doing fan translations of these games. You know, it's it's a scene that rhymes with the Sonic scene without the weird, uh, very strange fan art. I assume. <laughs> right. Well, so far. Yeah, the, yeah. The, we could be the ones that uh, accidentally open those floodgates, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, whoa, OK, it's time to draw that dungeon getting freaky. <laughs> can, can a dungeon get freaky? I don't. I think there's some precedent. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I think a dungeon is at least somewhat inherently. If you're if you're on Zillow and a house has a dungeon mm-hmm. like. It's going to be pretty freaky, yeah, I think. Right. Well, I mean, like, yeah. does it have to be like a dungeon where it's dark and there's torches and like a place to tie you up? Or is it just here's a trap door <laughs> and you <laughs> I'm imagining the real you estate like agent, a man cave, the right. real estate agent explaining like, no, you know, a lot of people have that assumption like a dungeon is going to be dank. It's going to be dark. It's going to yeah. be very, there's going to be torture <laughs> devices. No, like modern dungeons. A modern dungeon, <laughs> yeah. right? Where it's like, well, there's, you know, it's carpeted. You can brew your own beer here. Whoa! What? <laughs> Why would I do that? All of your hobbies can be here in the dungeon. Yeah, including the hops <laughs> for the beer. That they're called hop poppies. That that doesn't. Uh, it it was almost a joke, but it was almost a pun. Well, let's move to the mailbag. Uh, as you know, you can email us, sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. And if you make it clear that we can read it on the show, then probably we will do so. So here's a letter from Renee. Renee writes, hello, not sure what I'm supposed to write for these. <laughs> Found the podcast recently and have been really enjoying the laid back vibes in the background while I work on writing or playing a game that is good enough to be fun, but not engaging enough to carry my full attention. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I guess that's uh, good. I want to know what games for. those are. Are they Sonic games? If you could write back. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What games, Renee? Anyway, Renee continues. The episode that I just watched 
was your first with Cybershell, where it was offhandedly mentioned that people that grew up with Sonic 06 or Sonic and the Black Knight were coming into the world and are now old enough to defend the games they grew up with and causing them to be re-examined. Are there any games that come out that came out as flops that you think deserve a second look in hindsight? Have a good one, Renee. Oh, I I almost mentioned this earlier, but I think at some point we need to have the Sonic 4 episode 2 conversation. Wow. I mean, okay. Maybe. The Sonic 4 episode 2 conversation. I mean, open it up. I mean, we're already in Sonic 4 That's a- territory. I'm kind of I'm as prepared as I'll ever be <laughs> to talk about Sonic 4 episode 2. It's a good looking game with good it is. concepts that is ruined by the fucking long animations when you tap in tails at any point. Mm. Yeah. Right. Honestly, it's like a patch or two away. It's like a it, couple. It's, it really uh, is. It, right. yeah. it, it could be. Just make so those good. tails actions in, instantaneous and you've got like a pretty good game. It's, that makes sense. It's not on the Mount Rushmore. And, uh, you I, know, the constitutional validity is you know, in question in a few spots but yeah, it, it, they almost uh, had it all right i would also patch out that one spot in white park where you can get soft locked <laughs> <laughs> fair fair yeah uh you do that and it's fine uh uh yeah well i mean are we just talking sonic or could it be any game like you well what do you have in mind it's too early for Balan Wonder World. Right, it's too early for Balan. And also, I, I wouldn't, uh, I'm not about to look at that uh, kindly yet. Uh, you know, it, it could be worse. Too early and yet and too late as yeah. well. Uh, well, Bo, you've been diving through a lot, a lot of deep dives in the Saturn catalog. If there was a game where you're like, oh, you know, it wasn't well received, uh, like a Saturn game where either it just went completely under the radar or maybe there were reviews or it was like, this is kind of bad, but looking back, you're like, actually, this is, I love this. Is there anything that, <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's some things that have lived down to their reputations. Like I yeah. enjoyed Croc as a kid, but you know, like people thought, Oh, these controls are bad. And it's like a poor imitation of Mario 64 went back to it. And like, yeah, these controls are bad. And this is a poor Im- imitation of Mario 64. <laughs> I know Argonaut kind of got screwed by Nintendo and you know, he's good good looking guy but yeah that game is rough to play through Mm. the saturn has a few of like the worst versions of some games too right like isn't it the yeah there's a lot of bad ports especially by the non-japanese developers Mm. where yeah just they they knew how to do the playstation and then they just made the saturn version much worse like anything by a european developer is going to be trash on the saturn (laughs) fine on the playstation oh wow you know what game that doesn't fit that or maybe doesn't fit that I've never played it, but I've always been curious about it. So I guess here's a um, here's a lead, or maybe you already know, which is there was a video game based on the comic book, Scud the Disposable Assassin. Have we talked about this before? Uh, I think maybe it was on the episode where you weren't here. We mentioned it. Huh. <laughs> so it was in a magazine that I remember uh-huh. having at one point, and... I remember loving the character design and the concept. And it was by an artist named Rob Schraub, who has gone on to make television series like Rick and Morty and other things uh, with his creative partner, sometimes Dan Harmon. Right. I only knew Scud the Disposable Assassin as this thing in a magazine. I don't think I ever tracked down the comics as a kid. I read them later and enjoyed them. But I loved the concept of like, oh, he's an assassin that you he's like a Terminator that you buy out of a vending machine. And then. After he kills the target, he explodes and then he's done. But this one doesn't want to die. So he keeps his target on life support and then has to keep paying his bills by taking (laughs) other jobs. Uh, I didn't really know how the Saturn game actually is. But I remember that stuck. That was like a popcorn kernel that stuck in my mind for a while. And I've always been somewhat curious to know if the game was good or not, because I drew that character a lot in my notepads. Yes, here's the thing of like, I spend hours and hours like with these games and like very little time actually playing them. Uh, So I'm like reading code and like looking for stuff that people haven't noticed. But yeah, I've dedicated a few hours to discover the disposable assassin, but I don't think I got it at the first level. It seems fine. The title screen has like the character's voicemail, which is pretty funny. And to me, that was the highlight. Like, (laughs) look up that on YouTube. Can do. Welcome home, Bill. Thanks for letting me house it. Are you suntan? First of all, bad idea not telling Patrice you went to Mexico. She was over here looking for you. I covered for you, though. 
Second of all, I'm da -da -da, joining the army. <laughs> so I'm leaving tomorrow. I had a little party. Sorry, uh, have fun cleaning up. Oh, there's something wrong with your waterbed. Bill, this is your landlord. That party last night was the final straw. You kept me awake all night. Your waterbed sprung a leak and caused $1,500 worth of damage down here. Call me immediately to avoid legal action. I, uh, I don't know. I, I've never played it, but I, I do remember seeing those ads. There were always ads for certain things where it's like, oh, that could be great. And you just never, never get around to it. What a a lot of Gex ads in the day. Yeah, I, I, Gex was what I was about to say, like, yeah. Gex, a lot of Gex. I always wanted to play Gex. Didn't seem to, never bought Gex, never had Gex, but Gex seemed cool. I guess there's yeah. a, is, is there a Gex collection coming? So I guess we're going to. I think there is, yeah. Yeah, we're going to be revisiting Gex. Maybe Gex will finally end up on the Mount Rushmore of platform <laughs> icons, right? Mario, Sonic. Mm. Bubsy and Crack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I want to go back. Maybe I want to play Bubsy 2. I remember as a kid renting it no. and enjoying it more than Bubsy 1. I also remember that. Yeah. I remember you doing that. Oh, yeah, um, you were you were there. You were like, don't rent that. And yeah. I was like, Grant, I yeah. have to. No, but I <laughs> no, but I did the same thing. And Bubsy was also a character that I would draw, uh, draw, mm -hmm. even though I only knew them through magazine ads, because that's how culturally sort of you know bankrupt my childhood was. No, I, I think you know, like gay magazines or, or culturally rich because yeah. the magazine ads themselves were mm -hmm. so full of vibrant ideas right. that they were entertaining to my imagination. Oh. I think my best friend in middle school became my best friend because I was reading an EGM turned to an ad. I don't remember for which game. And he said, oh, that game is good. And I was like, oh, you play games and read EGM too? All right, we're friends now. And <laughs> we were, and it was great. That's all you need. Hell yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. should we... That's all you need. I guess we could mention RIP uh, Game Informer, which I think was like the last video game magazine, the last... The last yeah. one standing, and and they uh, they they shut down in between recordings. Yes, yeah, so, okay. I remember not liking them as a kid, <laughs> and then I, which I've talked about before because I remember them having like a sort of like a vaguely or maybe not vaguely anti Sega thing, which maybe they were just rightly saying that the Saturn and Dreamcast had no chance. But I was like, what do you know, Game Informer? Yeah. Uh, so I was like, they're just like Sony fanboys. But then obviously later on and more recently mm -hmm. in like the last 10, however many years when they've been like the last one around, they've been doing really good work. So definitely. Yeah. Right. A bummer. They had um, cover stories on Superstars and Frontiers, which we just talked about. They also yes. had one for uh, Penny's Big Breakaway. There was a, a nice spread in there. Um, I, I'm trying to remember if they talked about Balan at all. Like if they if Balan had a cover <laughs> yeah. story, I feel like it didn't. Yeah, I I never read Game Informer as a kid. I was more an EGM, occasional Game Pro. If there was a Sega one, like I read Sega Visions. I read the official yeah. Dreamcast yeah. magazine. That's what it was. But I would read EGM yeah. or Next Gen, or if Desperate yeah. Times. Next Gen was like the Thinking Man's game magazine. Yeah. So it was EGM and Next Gem, and if you're desperate, you'll grab a EGM Game Pro. was the standard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. EGM was standard. Game Pro was like a little, mm -hmm. I don't know, <laughs> kid, like a little younger, I think, maybe. Right. They, I mean, they had the rating system with the crazy heads. Whoa. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's scary, that's, Larry. Yeah. That's what sticks with me. But I just thought I'd say, yeah, RIP Game Informer, and also read the question in the email i don't know if it wasn't liked but i'll always say this play super magnetic neo on the dreamcast i feel like that game didn't get enough love i liked it i thought it was fun what do you think about pen pen dry isolon uh i've never played it oh well you know next time you have the opportunity okay i'll uh <laughs> ppt <laughs> speaking of r.i.p and also to answer the question mm -hmm. um you know i've been feeling the you know as you know i've been feeling the olympic fever uh, <laughs> oh yeah 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 i've got the i've got i've got the uh the fever mm -hmm. testing positive for olympic gold right. in my blood and i quite like the mario and sonic at the olympics on switch because it is you can just have buttons 
But I've heard that the Vancouver 2010 games was the best one on Wii. So I bought that on eBay and I've been playing that. And I've been hitting myself in the face a lot with the wire that connects the nunchuck to the <laughs> Wiimote because oh, no. most of the games are just like, you know, wag, 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 wag. And it's a shame that the Mario and Sonic at the Olympics um, series has ended without being able to progress past being so tied to Sega developing for the Wiimote, which was always a little bit of an odd fit. Mm. Because I think, say, and also that time period of like 2008 is when the series begins. So you're talking about the 20th. Like it's kind of a somewhat tumultuous period uh, before things get more steady at the end of it on the Sega side. Like the Sonic games were kind of inconsistent. Sonic 4 being one example. But uh, yeah, so RIP to Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. Maybe they'll come back. It's a shame that the Olympics went with whatever they esports and nfts or some stupid so maybe they'll come back maybe they'll be like you know what we messed up mario and sonic let's go back to the olympics maybe it'll be bubsy and gex next time you know i want to spit on both of these (laughs) graves so (sighs) game informer deleting their archives eh, that's not cool no and no mario and sonic the olympics like accurately captures the feeling of doing like a track and field event where you're like sitting around for six hours and then competing for 12 seconds like all right, I'm glad the series is done. Uh, well, it happens. they just needed playlists. They needed playlists. <laughs> it's too much time in between each right. event. I think yes, they, maybe the they thing. needed more dream events. I guess they were just stuck because like you have to make it look like it's in the place. Like oh, it's it's <laughs> it's Tokyo, it's London, it's Vancouver. Like you gotta make it. Well, only having so many events isn't necessarily a, a problem. I've been really enjoying the. Uh, NES World Championship, Nintendo World Championship, NES edition. It's like become a speedrunner in one game and it's like super fun. The challenges, blah, blah, blah. little bite sized micro games that can work. It just, you want to make the getting between those two games, between the mini games, as easy and fast and efficient as possible. Mm-hmm. And the Olympics games did not do that. Hey, anyway, mm-hmm. um, we're almost at time. So do we want to have any last thoughts on Superstars and Frontiers before we send it to David? Final thoughts are I really like both of the games. I really like the risk taking in Frontiers and I really like the classic adherence of Superstars. If I had to pick like, you know, which one will all future Sonic scholars study, it's probably going to be Frontiers. And, you know, I accept that. but. You know, kind of like Teddy Roosevelt on Mount Rushmore. You know, one of them's not going to really fit, and that one's going to be Superstars. <laughs> That's right, great grandfather of Doctor Eggman. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it makes it makes sense. Yeah, like I, I like Frontiers as a whole package more than Superstars. That does not mean Superstars doesn't have its high moments. It does. It just it needed more things ironed out and in a couple levels just needed like another pass. And I, and I think I superstars had the potential to be better than frontiers and it just wasn't. And maybe that's why I'm, I'm more hard on it. And then that's why I have to give it to frontiers. And I think frontiers is still strong. And Hey, if you haven't played either, you should play both. Why are you listening to a Sonic podcast? If you haven't, but what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> I agree with most of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I agree with the conclusion, if not necessarily the reasoning. Okay, David. But I, th- I think you're. I think it's definitely like frontiers. For for me, it's frontiers by a by a solid mile. Mm-hmm. But I think what I hope for with superstars is that it actually becomes more of an outlier. Mm-hmm. I hope that the classic series goes back to mania. Okay. Somehow. Right. That would be my dream scenario is Evening Star does another one. Yeah. Uh, That would be super, 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 super cool. And even if it's not that, I really like the pixel look. And if it's not that, then maybe it's like Sonic 4 Episode 2, where it is the modern cast and the modern abilities. It's just 2D, like most of Sonic Colors and a lot of Sonic Forces. Yeah. So I like it, but I like it in the same way that I like Sonic CD, where it's the weird one and I like it because it's sort of the odd duck and I, I enjoy that about it. Um, 
but Frontiers is addictive. Frontiers is one of the best in the series, despite everything, despite so much about it. It's it's really the most fun you could have outside of a Sonic adventure or a generation. But they should bring back Trip. Let's have more Trip. Um, yeah, more Trip. More Trip. But maybe you can ex- explain why she becomes a dragon. <laughs> yeah, David. Yeah. You know, sometimes you you look at somebody and you go, "Wait, how did you turn into a dragon?" But you know, if and if you are in your car right now and just saw someone turn into a golden dragon and fly away, I don't know what to say to you, except you've definitely reached the end of another episode of Sonic Weekly. That's right, uh, the weekly Sonic the Hedgehog podcast, which we hope you've enjoyed and if you have enjoyed well you know if you haven't done it already you should of course subscribe to this podcast using your podcatcher of choice be it apple podcasts be it spotify be it podcast addicts on the old android devices because let's let's be honest you listen to podcasts on the go and if you don't have an iphone you have an android and what are you going to use on your android it's podcast addict just do it they'll they'll love you for it and hey you know what in some of those apps you can review it you can give give those stars that's what helps us in in whatever magical algorithms exist in the in the podcastosphere or whatever it's called but if you want to reject all podcatchers we are of course on youtube that's at sonic dash weekly which has uh, gameplay footage of a variety of games, not just Sonic, but usually it's somewhat attaches to what we were talking about. Done, recorded, of course, by a friend of the show, Jack of Old Games. And you can do all the like, comments, and subscribes you want over there. Hey, shout out to uh, Jack. You know, he, he struggled a little bit in the uh, Marble Garden Zone <laughs> in last week's episode with the spinning top. Who hasn't? Who among us has not occasionally really struggled with those fucking things they are very annoying oh yeah uh and he eventually got past it but someone pointed it out (laughs) jack and i talked about it we it was like yeah what do you what do you want it's it's honest that's what you can expect honest gameplay also um was that origins as well i don't yeah it's a little different there yeah Yeah. the the top is broken in origins i know plus they kind of fix it but it's still it's it's not right it's not right I I don't know what you're doing over there, Sega. Fix the top. Hashtag fix the top. Hey, right. You can always reach the show using the email sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. Drop us a line. We have the mailbag section. We'll read out what you send to us. You can also use that to ask for the link to our Discord server, but that's not the only way. As mentioned at the top of the show, we have the Ko-Fi, the coffee, K-O-F-I, what what is it? Is it just Sonic Weekly? I, I actually I don't remember now. Yeah, it's just Sonic Weekly. You know, you can if you link the links in the, the li- description. Yeah, if you want to support the show, help you know with the cost. Sonic Weekly, all one word. Sonic Weekly. Co dash fi dot com yes. slash Sonic. Co dash fi uh, slash dot com slash Sonic Weekly. There's there's you can drop in a tip, or hey, you can also subscribe to the membership where, like Grant said. There's some extra goodies, including Wife of the Grant. Uh, <laughs> wife of the... Ch- well, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> gonna yes, do, we just, she's going to do art. You out. don't get all of her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you don't... You just get some stickers and some custom art, yeah. and you can uh, get all... You can get lots of stuff, not just from uh, Ashlyn, although she likes to create art for the listeners, uh, but also David is going to write you a sonnet. <laughs> Bo is going to program you a robot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and I will um, speak at your parents' anniversary. Whoa, dinner. that's pretty impressive. Assuming they're still together, of course. I, will yeah. you really do this for me? Because I, it's coming up, and I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah, record yeah. a little video message. What are you doing in three days? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I'll be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you tell me you tell me the steakhouse, and I'll I'll show up in a suit. All yeah. right, you're a lifesaver. Great. <laughs> so yeah, either way, because uh, if you if you drop in a tip or subscribe or send us an email and ask for the link, either way, however you want to, that's how you can get into the Discord server. Talk to like-minded Sonic the Hedgehog fans. It's not all Sonic, but you know it's Sonic. Hey, and I guess I should thank. 
um, it, it, uh, Jack is doing the edit this this episode. Yeah, he's gonna come in with Jack of Old Games. Yes, yes, and, and thank you, Jack of Old Games, for editing this week's episode. We do appreciate it. You know, making us sound the best we can be. Trademark, and of course, thank you, Bo and Grant, for uh, for joining, for for being here, for for allowing me to join you. We're all joined together. We're like a Transformer. No, it's a Megazord. Transformers just transform solo. Megazords come together. That's teamwork. Makes the dream work. <laughs> High five. Salutations. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, David. 